Hi there, new R owners. Today on your 2013 new R Bay Star, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's rear sway bar. The sway bar here that we've put on from Roadmaster is an additional rear sway bar that you'll add to your motor home. So it's not a replacement sway bar. Um, so if you do have any kind of damage or something like that to your factory one, you would want to take care of that, but you can still add this to get even further anti-sway benefits. Our factory one's located here on the front of our differential, our rear axle here. But the one from Roadmaster that we install goes just behind the rear axle here. So they will work together in conjunction to help minimize sway. We can kind of see here how it's going to work. So if we look, it is attached to our axle with the bushing clamps on each side. The arm goes out and it connects to our hangers here, which go up and connect to the frame of the motorhome. So as you're driving down the road, you know, your axle here is always going to be planted on the ground, pushing your motorhome down the road, but your suspension has the weight of all your rest of your motorhome on top, your frame here. So as you're driving down the road and a big heavy wind hits, it tilts with the suspension and you're going to get some sway. You also get that from hard turns, uh, potentially from potholes and stuff that you hit out on the road. So our arms here, well, they're in this position just like this and it's attached to our axle, which is always going to be steady, and our motorhome can sway on top of that. So if our motorhome was to sway, we'll just do an example that it sways towards the passenger side. Our motorhome's tilting this way. So that means the frame there is going to come down and get closer to the axle. Well, when it does, this is a solid piece, so that has to push down on this arm, and it twists this sway bar a little bit, twists it like that. Now the opposite side, since it's tipping this way, the frame's actually getting pulled up a little bit away from our axle. So our twist is happening like this in our bar. And when the bar twists, you know, it doesn't want to twist. So it wants to be in its normal resting state like you see it here. So it's gonna pull back to remain in this position. That's how our front sway bar works at the front of the vehicle. That's how the factory one here works. We've just got more beef and more metal now here to prevent that sway from occurring and minimizing how much we get if we do start to get sway. When you have sway occurring and it becomes excessive, you actually sway to so far to one side, and then when you come back, you'll actually go beyond center and sway the other way, and you kind of settle back out. By adding additional sway bars in here, it minimizes that to the point where you may not even have any crossover um, above that like straight up and down threshold. You might just go back and then just straighten right back up. So it makes a big difference in the controllability of your motorhome. You've got a lot more control when things are stable on the inside. Um, you feel a lot more confident when taking turns. So we are going to be taking this on our test course so that way you can kind of see some of that in action. Now Roadmaster does also make replacement sway bars for your front axle. So that way you can get a bigger, beefier one up there. That one is going to be a replacement. It's not an additional one like the rear here. Um, I highly recommend that. These motorhomes are beasts, so they need these upgrades to just help tame it and make it more controllable and comfortable for you. To help, um, help you relax a bit when driving, give you more energy when you get there. In addition to sway bars, I would also recommend sumo springs. You can get those here at e-trailer for both the rear and front axle. They also help to prevent sway and dampen out any impact shit on the road, as well as providing a little bit of assistance for your suspension carrying the weight of this big old motorhome. Lastly, I'd also recommend a steering stabilizer, which installs on the front on your uh, the drag link bar that goes across. And what that does for you is whenever you hit a pothole or something, you've probably been in your motorhome and you hit a pothole and it jerks the wheel real hard to the left or to the right based on where that or that pothole was. That stabilizer has a shock dampener in there that will absorb some of that road impact so it doesn't jerk as hard. And it also has a spring mechanism on it that is set at the center position. So if it does jerk one way or the other, it's not just you pulling that wheel back straight, that spring mechanism is also gonna help pull the wheel back straight. All those things together really do a great job of taming these big old beasts, giving you control, and just making it an easier time so you're not white knuckling this thing all the way to your destination. To begin our installation, you'll first want to open up your box. Just make sure you got all your parts there. I like to lay them all out and make sure that I've got everything that I need. I also like to take them and separate them from side to side because you're going to have parts that install on one half that are going to be the same on the other half. So that way you can kind of separate them out so you can put your parts where you need them. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our motorhome, park it onto level ground, and we're going to use the leveling jacks on our motorhome to raise the motorhome up some 
So that way we're gonna get additional clearance between our leaf spring stack and the side of our frame so we can remove some bolts to get our first bracket installed. And here you can see our leveling jacks. We did place some blocks underneath them to give us additional lift. So that way we're able to lift the motor home up high enough to allow our leaf spring to clear the bolts we need to. After you've got it lifted up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you place jack stands underneath the frame to support the vehicle because we don't wanna just trust our hydraulics while we're working underneath of it. So we're now looking through the driver's side wheel well, just above the tires and a little bit towards the rear of the motor home. You'll have your leaf spring stack there and you'll have four bolts on the side of the frame. We're interested in the two lower bolts. Those are the ones we wanna remove and that's why we had to lift our motor home up. If you come over here and you just look at this before you use your leveling jacks to lift the motor home up, you'll see that that leaf spring is running right in front of those two lower bolts and you're not gonna be able to remove them. So that's why we had to raise the motor home up some to give us the clearance we need to get those two lower bolts out. We'll remove those with a 21 millimeter socket. I do recommend probably using a little bit of rust penetrant on them to make them easier. If you got an older motor home here, this one's getting close to a decade old, uh, you're probably gonna need a breaker bar to crack them loose or something like that. If you got a powerful enough impact, you should be able to zip them right out of there, but I still recommend the rust penetrant. So now we're just gonna remove them. There are nuts on the back side, but the nuts have a little flange welded onto them that'll hold it, so you don't need to put a wrench or anything on it. The nut may drop to the ground, no big deal, but we are gonna reuse this hardware. So you saw the nut fell there, and the nut fell on the other one. So now that we've got both of those loose, you can see we can remove the bolts. So we'll take both of those out, and then we'll install our bracket that goes on this side. So here we have our bracket. You'll get two of these in your kit. They're not side specific, so just grab one of the two. This is the orientation it's gonna uh, install onto the frame like I'm holding it here. So there you can see the side view. It's kind of an L shape on top with our hanger down below. The two holes in our bracket here will line up with the holes where the bolts we just removed were. So just slide that up into place there. We'll then grab our bolts and line those up with the holes. So just get those in there and push them through. And we'll get our other bolt pushed through. And I'm gonna show you the nuts real quick so you can see what we were talking about. So these are the nuts that we're gonna thread the bolt into on the other side. You can see there's that flange that will hit the frame to keep it from uh, being able to rotate. So that way we don't need that wrench like we talked about. Um, so when we put these on the other side, I'm gonna hold this up to the bolt and you actually gotta spin the bolt to be able to start it in there because of that flange, you're not gonna be able to spin the nut. And once we get both of them started by hand, then we can take our gun now and we'll zip them back down. After we've got them tightened down, we'll go back with our torque wrench and we'll torque them to the specifications outlined in our instructions. All right, now that we've got this side installed, we're gonna repeat the exact same procedures over on the other side. You can see this cross tube in the middle will lead right over to the other side and we're gonna do that over there. All right, so now that we've got these brackets installed, we did go ahead and lower it down off of our leveling jacks and we put it on our lift here. Um, if you're doing this at home, you will at some point need to put it back on the ground for your sway bar to properly line it up. Um, you're not quite there yet though, so I, I went ahead and did it here just because it makes it easier for us to film, but I'll let you know at home at what point you do for sure have to lower it back down. So you can still keep it up a little bit. We got some hardware we're gonna feed into place, get a couple of things set up. So you should have some smaller bolts in your kit. Those should have lock washer, uh, they should have regular washers and lock nuts. We're gonna go ahead and take off one washer and the lock nut there. So go ahead and put a washer on each one of those. And then we're gonna take these bolts and drop them down through the holes here in the bottom of our shock mount. So you see here where our shock is attached, we've got this uh, parallel mount that's welded to the axle there. There's two holes in the bottom of it. These bolts will drop down through those holes. So it is a little weird kind of feeding it in there. There's some openings on the side or you can go here or whatever. You'll probably just want to just drop the bolt in there first. Just kind of drop it in there and then you can maneuver it around until it drops down the hole. There we go. So we got that one to drop down. There's another one here. So we're gonna do the same thing for this hole. Same thing, just probably just kind of have to drop it in there. Oh wait, that one fell right into the hole. So that worked out perfect. After you get those dropped down on 
This side, the shock over on the passenger side, we're gonna drop the bolts down there the exact same way. Make sure you got your hardware near you. So I'm gonna take the washers and nuts that were close, or that we were gonna use with these, and we're just gonna put them right here because the sway bar is pretty heavy, so I highly recommend having your hardware nearby where you can uh, be able to easily reach it. So we'll also set our hardware there, get that set up on the other side. The next thing we're gonna do is install the uh, hanger that will go to the mount that we put on right there. So our hanger will attach with one of the large bolts that comes in our kit. And if we look at the hanger here, the hanger has multiple holes. So that is for getting the proper orientation for our sway bar. We want it to be parallel. And our upper bracket where we're going to slide this into, that also has a couple of holes in it, two holes. So you may or may not need to adjust this up or down into a different hole at a later step. So we don't want to tighten these down yet. We're just going to kind of set it in there. That way when we get our bar up there, we can kind of hold it up, see how things look. So I'm going to slide it in. We're going to start with the lower hole. And then after we slide our bolt from the outside towards the inside, we'll take the nut and we're just loosely putting it on there just so that way it can't fall off of there. We'll also set up the other side the same way. Make sure you're using the same hole on each side. Next thing we're gonna do is get our bushings set up on our bar here. So this is your bushing. You also got a bushing cap there. The bushing cap, we'll just pull that off for now. The bushing is a split bushing, so there should be an opening in it. It's kind of hard to see because it's sealed, but we'll just give it a pull. There you go, you can see it is split. That way we can slide it over our sway bar. Before we slide it on there though, you do get some lubricant in your kit and we want that lubricant to fully coat the interior of this bushing. Now this lubricant, some customers have indicated that it irritates their skin. Now I've never noticed it myself, but uh, everybody's different. You know your, your body better than anybody else. So if you think that it's gonna be an issue, you might wanna wear some latex gloves or something to protect yourself. So we're just gonna get a dollop there and then we're just gonna smear this all around the inside of that hole there. We want to fully coat both sides, so if we get that side, we'll flip it over, make sure this side's coated all the way to the edge. Now, after we get the inside fully coated here, you might have a little bit of extra that's on your finger, kind of that stuff there. What I like to do with the extra is I'll put that on the outside. We don't want a lot of grease here on the outside, but just this little kind of bit you got left in your finger will be fine, and this can just help to prevent squeaks and rattles. Um, but again, you don't want excessive amounts on here because uh, our bushing could potentially want to slide around in the in the clamp. So just a little bit there is fine. And then we're going to go ahead and put this on our sway bar now. So that's split. Go ahead and open it up. We'll go over to our bar and then just spread it open and slide it on the bar there. You can go ahead and put your cap on it if you want, um, but it's not uncommon that those caps want to kind of slide off on there when you're lifting the bar in place. So you don't you don't have to put that on now. We'll then do the same thing over on the other side to get our other bushing prepared. All right, now at this point, we've got everything prepped. We're ready to lift the bar up. So this is the time where you need to pull your jack stands out, get your motorhome back down on the ground so it's resting on its own suspension system. And then we'll head underneath and get our bar lifted up. If we, you lay it on the ground, you can see this portion here, our arm should be lifted up. Just, you know, kind of like that if you were holding it up a little bit. That's gonna go straight up from there. So we're not gonna lift it into position. So just make sure you've got it in this orientation where if your arms are straight, this kind of dips down just a little bit in the middle. That's to clear our uh, differential there. We're gonna grab the big bolts that come in our kit and we're gonna be lifting the bar up. I like to put it on this side first and then swing it up to attach it here. Um, the instructions recommend using a floor jack to lift up this side and attaching your clamps first. Um, it's really up to you. I personally find it easier to do it this way first. So you got your bolts prepared here. You can just drop the nuts down. Now, what I like to do for this is if you see the three holes you've got here, you kind of put yourself at the same plane as the holes and look forward. You can kind of get an idea of roughly where parallel is gonna be. So we're gonna probably choose the middle hole here and start with that hole and we'll, we'll see how it looks when we swing it up. So we're gonna lift the bar up now, bring it the end through here, and then slide our bolt through. So I like to kind of rest it on my body, and then I'll use my body to help raise it up. And then I can slide that from the outside. 
through, place my nut on the other side. Again, just loosely in case we need to move this to a different hole position. Then the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just lifting that up, sliding our bolt through, and putting our nut on there loosely. So now we're just kind of just swinging it up into position. We need to get our bushings, bushing clamps lined up with our bolts. So we got that side decently lined up. Looks like we need to push it a little bit more towards the center. And then the same thing on the other side. Trying not to push the bolts back up into the frame while doing this, or up into the a bracket there. After you've got it up there now, we can take a washer and one of the nuts, slide it over our bolt. I'm putting a little bit of side pressure on the washer to keep the bolt from pushing up and then threading my lock nut on there. When you thread on your lock nuts, you'll notice that one end is tapered and the other is flat. The flat side is going to be the one. The flat side will go up towards our bushing clamp. Yeah, and one of those uh, clamps fell off of there. We kind of mentioned that sometimes those things just fall off. They slide off of there. No big deal. We can reach down and grab our clamp and just slide it back up and do the other side the same way now. All right, now that we got the hardware started on each side, we want to just do a quick visual check on our arm here. And I like to compare it to the frame of my motorhome, kind of making sure it's parallel to the frame, parallel to the ground. And this looks pretty good. We're ever so slightly higher um, on this side, but I don't think if we, if we dropped it down, we'd be angled down. And also we have a little bit of a gap here on our axle. And if we push that up, that puts it almost perfectly uh, parallel with our frame in the ground. So we're all good with the holes that we've chosen here, um, but you just want to double check that because there's so many different options and stuff for suspension. You could have uh, slightly different size spacers and things like that for your ride height that could adjust, uh, make this a little bit different on yours versus this one here. So you just want to just double check that. This all looks good. So we'll go to the small hardware here first and tighten down our clamps uh, for our bushings. We're going to use an 11 16 socket to tighten the nuts and a 5 8 wrench to hold the bolts. You should be able to get sneak in right here underneath the shock for the rear one. And then for our front one, there's a cutout in the side here that you should be able to get in. And now we can go ahead and tighten down our upper and lower hanger bolts. These ones are going to be a 15 16 for both the bolt and the nut. And we can then go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. And now with all of our hardware torqued, that'll complete our installation. We're ready to just take it out for a quick test drive. If we hear any clunks or anything like that, just double check your torque on all of your hardware. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's rear sway bar on our 2013 Newmar Baystar.